Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm super happy to have you. Um, so today's video, I want to talk about, <clears throat> well, I'm gonna be starting a series on um, how we got pregnant naturally. And I thought the best way to kind of intro into that was to do a video on our infertility history. So that's what today's video is gonna be about. So we started trying to conceive in October of 2010 and it was super casual. We weren't really doing anything um, other than not preventing at that point. And then in um, about the middle of 2011, I started charting my basal body temperature. After doing that for a few months, I noticed that everything seemed pretty normal as far as my temperature rises and everything. I was having rises after day 14, so I knew I was ovulating and my cycles were very, very regular, always 28 days. So after about a year of charting my temperatures um, and still nothing, I guess so this was about a year and a half into it, um, I scheduled my first appointment with my OB regarding fertility issues um, in or about the middle of 2012. At this appointment, um, all of the testing and blood work that they did came back perfectly normal. Um, they did confirm that I was ovulating and all of my cycle day three blood work, so like my AMH and my FSH and all of that stuff all came back perfectly normal too. And then I had an HSG done in September of 2012 and that showed bilateral spillage, so um, my fallopian tubes were not blocked at all. At this point, that was pretty much all that my OB could do for us, so she referred us to our first um, RE, and we had our first appointment with him in December of 2012. At this appointment, my husband had a semen analysis done, and all of that came out perfectly normal. Um, the motility and the morphology was perfectly normal, and his count was actually really, really high, so that wasn't our issue. So we did our first IUI in January of 2013, um, and I responded so well to Clomid. Um, I had, at the appointment of when we were gonna do the IUI, they do the ultrasound to find out how many mature follicles you have and see how you responded. And I had 11 mature follicles, which is really, really good for just Clomid and not injectables, it was just Clomid that I was taking. They were trying to discourage us to have the IUI um, just because I had so many mature follicles. So we had to sign waivers and um, just really let them know that we understood that we were at a very high risk for multiples. Um, and so that's kind of what we were expecting and we were preparing ourselves for a multiples type of pregnancy. Um, but that ended in a BFN. We didn't get pregnant from our first IUI. So at this point, um, I guess we were still like um, unexplained infertility. Um, the our, our RE said that we had a less than 1% chance of conceiving on our own, but um, he never came out and gave us an actual diagnosis. Um, I was kind of leaning towards endometriosis, um, but of course the only way to diagnose that is a laparoscopy. In March of 2013, I had a laparoscopy done. Um, and my RE never came out and said endometriosis. He said that he removed adhesion. At this point, I kind of um, diagnosed myself with endometriosis. So right after I did the laparoscopy, um, we did our second IUI in May of 2013. Um, and that was also unsuccessful. The rest of 2013, we just tried naturally. Um, of course, nothing happened. And then in January of 2014, we made the official decision to move on with IVF number one. Um, in March of 2014, I had a hysteroscopy and the saline sonogram. All came out perfectly normal. I was told I had a beautiful uterus and we should have no problems with implantation. Everything should be perfectly fine. Started stims for IVF number one in July of 2014. Our retrieval was August 4th and I had 23 eggs retrieved, 18 were mature, all 18 fertilized with ICSI, five made it to the blastocyst stage and were biopsied and sent out for PGS testing. And after PGS testing, we were left with one normal PGS tested boy embryo. And um, that was just shocking for me. I, w I wasn't expecting to only have one embryo after our first IVF cycle. We transferred this embryo on September 30th of 2014. And then seven days past a five day transfer, I had a very faint positive home pregnancy test. Um, and the next day beta health started. Um, I went in for my first beta 
um, at AJ's past five day transfer and that came back at 27, which is really low. They wanna see it at 50 or above. Um, and then we went back two days later at 10 days past a five day transfer and my number was still at 27. So that's obviously not good. Um, and then I went back, that was a Friday. Then I went back Monday at, I guess it was 13 days past a five day transfer. Beta dropped down to seven and then two days later it was down to two. So IVF number one ended in a very early miscarriage or chemical pregnancy. Um, we were completely devastated. Um, and a large part of this was because the RE that we were seeing, there's basically one in our state. And so we thought that was our only option. And financially, um, we thought that we really only had one chance at this. So we were absolutely devastated. Um, we kind of took the rest of the year to just kind of regroup and figure out what we were going to do. I did a lot of research and found out that um, there were REs in our surrounding states that were much more affordable and actually <laughs> had better rates, um, better success rates than our RE here. So we had our second opinion consultation with our new, our second RE in uh, March of 2015 and we absolutely loved him. Um, just the feeling we got from him and how informative he was and he was just he was a really great re so um, we decided to move forward with ivf number two um with him so i started stims for ivf number two on july 3rd of 2015 <clears throat> and we had um our egg retrieval on july 14th of 2015. we had 25 eggs retrieved um 20 were mature and 18 fertilized we transferred two three-day embryos on July 17th of 2015 and we had six frozen. I got a negative um, home pregnancy test at nine days past a three-day transfer and then beta was scheduled for July 31st but I started uh, bleeding on July 30th so I went in for early beta and my HCG levels came back at zero so um, our fresh transfer for IVF number two failed. For our first um, FET for IVF number two, we transferred three three-day embryos and that was on Valentine's Day of 2016. Um, that was a BFN, that one failed. And then the following month, we just did back-to-back -back transfers. And so in March of 2016, we transferred our final three frozen embryos and that was also a BFN. So by now we had transferred a total of nine embryos and only had one pregnancy which ended in a very early miscarriage and so we were kind of starting to feel i was starting to feel a little bit hopeless at this point um we regrouped and spoke with our re and came up with a game plan and that plan was to do another laparoscopy in january of 2017 um this my first laparoscopy was done with our first re and um being how little information he gave us and I'm guessing he didn't take very good notes because after getting our medical records um, our new RE wanted to do a laparoscopy for himself um, so our plan was to do my second laparoscopy in January of 2017 and immediately after in February we were going to do IVF number three our um, anniversary is in October and so I worked, booked a cruise for us in October of 2016 and we were going to do a Clomid cycle um, just because we had four months before I was going to do my laparoscopy and it was just driving me crazy just sitting around doing nothing and not being proactive or just not trying at all. So um, I got a prescription for Clomid and I was supposed, I got a prescription for birth control so I could regulate my cycle. I was supposed to start my period on September 9th of 2016. Um, and I had it by September 10th, so I took a home pregnancy test and I got a positive. Um, we, it was a total surprise BFP, natural BFP, um, <coughs> and we really couldn't believe it. I had an extremely smooth pregnancy, a uh, semi-rough delivery. Um, I will link all of these videos about everything I'm talking about. I'll probably put them up in the iCards too, but um, I'll link all those videos for you guys. Um, and our miracle baby girl was born on April 30th of 2017. She is about to be nine months now, and um, we are officially trying to conceive baby number two. Um, our, we're on our second cycle. 
and so i'm gonna be making videos about those so yes um that is our infertility journey thus far obviously not over because i just told you we're trying to conceive baby number two um but if you want to find out how all this plays out go ahead and subscribe um I know this video was probably pretty long and then I tried to leave out a lot of the emotion of it and just straight facts for you guys that way it wasn't super super long but um yeah that's that that's our infertility history up until now um I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in my next video bye